And they were small, and I liked working small, and it was a little something different from the release. Now, why the reference to Big Mac? Little Big Mac. Well, uh, well because the bottom, well, it, the base is, is from a Mac toy, from the McDonald's toy. Mm -hmm. And all the little soldiers I found, and I just painted them up, so it was like the Little Big Mac, like Little Big Horn. But mm -hmm. It was a Little Big Mac, so it's like a battle scene. It's like a little war theme. And then the harvest is like, you know, Harvest, the Grim Reaper or something. It reminds me of The Wizard of Oz a little bit, like a hybrid of the Tin Man and the Scarecrow. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, um, this is, you, uh, you were invited in 1992 to do an installation at the Washington Project for the Arts in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. So tell us about what you came up with for that project. Well, uh, that was just... Uh, just had to come up with it with an image, and I had these images of. Uh, How much time did you have to uh, install this? Well, they, I think it was like a month residency. Oh, very good. And so we, li I lived upstairs, and then we'd come down at nine of the day and paint this. It's, it's really three dimensional, and, and did you do on all the, the painting wall. yourself on this? Yeah, that I did all myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the top is on the top is the, the red plant. It's a kid's uh, Halloween cape, a little red sun. Uh -huh. That's like the night sky, and then down there you had a hand with a gun, you had a monkey, you had the tomato again, you had a pencil, had a dog to the left, and then you had the I Spy character riding the little palm tree. And then in the front you have a little a dog with a little creatures on it, came from a Mad Magazine. And then you don't see it, but then it goes around the side and up the stairs, but I didn't get that shot of the photo. Uh -huh. I, I forget the name of this piece, but it's all painted on the wall mostly. And then in the same year, uh -huh. you did your most ambitious installation to date at the Dallas Museum of Art. The Dallas Museum of Art. Uh -huh. And uh, that's this one. We're looking at a couple of installation views and a couple of details. And in fact, I can see at the far left there, there's another woman with a bow. Well, that's the one that's in this show, the exactly. little girl on the mushroom. Okay. And, uh, and so tell us about what's taking place in that environment. Well, the idea was to do, was the theme was Easy Rider, from the movie Easy Rider. Mm -hmm. And it was the guy on the motorcycle. So it's really, the, that relief you see there is called High Sea Avenger. It's a huge relief. And that relief is big motorcycle handlebars. And that's, it sort of evolved from the idea of making a, an image with the idea of Easy Rider. And then there's the sun-kissed orange from the sun-kissed orange box, orange box. So that's a relief, and then you had these black dots I got from an, it was an op art, it was a science book where you looked at those black dots, you had an after image. Okay. And then you have, then you have all these portraits, these dots turned into these color dots that had portraits. And as you go around the room, you have this little sci-fi thing going on, this robot. And then you had the logo on the mushroom, and then behind the mushroom is an image of John Lennon, and you see that here. And uh, that was just, I don't uh, it just sort of, it just grows on its own. You know, I started, I'd just like to see something like this in a room, that little girl in a mushroom on a mirror. I like that idea. That came from a birthday card from the 70s, and I just made her look like she was sort of like atomic, like this atomic figure. Mm -hmm. So I made her red, and I wanted to make her look like a big jelly candy. With a big bow in her hair. With a big bow. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, so I really wanted to make her like a gummy bear, candy girl thing, kid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on and, a mushroom. And our little devil there. And just a little Hot Times, hot times. yeah. Where'd he come from? From a comic strip, the Hot Times. I think it was uh, Hot Stuff. And then um, getting back to creatures. More insects. You seem to, yeah, you've done a lot of insects over the years. Um, again, there's John Lennon in the insect appropriately called Beetle. Beetle. Uh, and bug fiction. Tell us about bug fiction. Well, it's just another idea of just putting an image within an image that's a bug, and then that image is a, some, it's like a little uh, gangster. You can't really tell. It's kind of abstract there. It's a gangster scene of somebody shooting a gun from behind a chair. It's like a little, you know, it's hard Were to you, tell. Was this influenced by the movie Pulp Fiction? Well, this was before the, the... This was before the movie Pulp yeah. Fiction? I think it was, yeah. Well, I liked Pulp Fiction a lot, yeah. Yeah. And I think Pulp Fiction was out by 94. Oh, okay. Okay. Back to the works in Zoe's room. We have... Oh, yes. This is one of your great masterpieces, Solana Squid. So, yeah, Solana Squid. <laughs> 
and uh, detail, of course, so you can talk about that. Now, this one's really complex. Uh, you've, of course, added something to it with, with Zoe's room, which is uh, the rope on the wall uh, going into a black hole there. Uh, so tell us first about what's going on in Salina Squid. Where did the title come from? What are the different parts of it? Well, it's basically a giant squid that I found, that image. The squid itself, which is the red body part, down there is the body of the squid. And you have the two eyeballs. It's a big red thing. And that came from a, a teenager's book that was, showed a squid battling in the ocean. It was for teenagers, a little mm -hmm. paperback. I got the squid from there. And then, uh, and then I have the, the, the image of a girl holding a gun. And, uh, well, is it just any girl holding a gun? Well, it, was supposed to, well, it came from a, from, a cop, from a book. Well, it's called Solana Squid because Valerie Solanus had, is the one that shot Andy Warhol. Now, that was supposed to be specifically Valerie Solanus, but that girl came, sort of plays a role, but she plays a lot of roles of and some so kind it, of dangerous. It, it, make sure everybody can see her in there. It's sort of an aerial view of this girl who's supposed to be Valerie Solanus, and she's wearing a bikini, I think. Uh -huh. And then she's holding this huge gun. Right. Okay. So between the eyes of the squid, which is on the bottom, the two eyes of the squid, between mm -hmm. the two is a little gun. Then part, of, and then so when you look inside the squid, you see uh, uh, H.R. Puff and stuff to the left. And then above Puff and stuff, you see the, the Viking's helmet. Mm -hmm. And then you see the rat that's on the Viking's helmet. And that rat came from a horror movie called Food of the Gods. And it shows this, and it's all about rats that, you know, they take over. And then on top of it, of course, you got the bow mm -hmm. that's in the middle of the piece. It's, it's hard to tell. There's that green and the red little ribbons kind of cascading down. That's the first prize bow, or first prize. So that's like another idea of like uh, Academy Award. You win this prize for doing good work. They give you a, a, a bow, a ribbon. So that's the line of squid right there. Well, there's other images in there. Then there's Batsicle. That's the first thing I made when I came back to San Antonio because there was all these ice cream trucks going down my neighborhood. And they were always playing all this ice cream music, and they always had all these popsicle images on their little trucks. And I like the idea of a popsicle. And it's a bat emerging from a popsicle. And it's actually very three-dimensional. Yeah, it's it 3D. It's hard to see it in yeah. a picture, but you can see it in the gallery right next door. That's I Salute, just another well, Tex Avery image. Uh, it's a combination of two Tex Avery images that I put together, and it made sort of like this big eyes and Frankenstein and the little vignette. And it's just this little figure that's jumping back with his eyes popping out. It's kind of simple. You, you, you also favor eyes a lot, I've noticed, in a lot yeah, of your work. Yeah, I do a lot of eyeballs. Big, wide open eyes. That kind of comes out of Looney Tunes, too, a bit. Yeah, they it? do a lot of eyeballs, yeah. And Ed, Ed Roth, Big Daddy Ed Roth, does a lot of big eyes, balls. Mm -hmm. Kind of, well, because it's art, you know. And then in 2000, you were invited to do an installation, uh, be a resident at Art Pace here in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you've reinstalled the piece here for Zoe's room, Jerry's Kids. Jerry's Kids, yeah. Jerry Lewis, that's like a Jerry's Kids. I don't know why I called it that, but it just seemed right. Jerry's kids. And it's a bongo player, and he's playing the bongos about the bottom left. And there's another big shoe with, it's like a little quote from the other piece I did with the Jerry's yep, logo. Yeah, Jerry on the heel of the shoe. And then there's this flame that's coming out of this plane, this bongo player, beat neck bongo player is playing these music and all this fire's coming out of it, flames. And out of that also is this deputy dog, and not deputy dog, droopy. And there's a lemon, and then there's all this. Now that's a real, there's this kind of weird serpentine creature coming out. That's a real creature from a biology book. And then out of that has come a Basil Wolverton head. The big eyeball is actually a Basil Wolverton, but I don't want to get sued for copying Basil Wolverton, so I had to change them. So I, that's why there, these things change, so they don't know where this comes from. So it's this big eyeball, and then out of this eyeball, there's another vignette of Frankenstein in the graveyard with a little yo-yo. That's from an actual, uh, you can't see it here, but it's a uh, model kit. But why it's called Jerry's Kids, I couldn't tell you. I, I mean, I can't. Well, it's except that Jerry Lewis is on the heel. Jerry of the Lewis is on yeah. the And I just like <laughs> the idea of Jerry's, to think, you think of Jerry's Kids, but then you see this. 
that make sense? Lion's tail. Yeah, Lion's tail, somebody gave me an idea. They says, why don't you do an Aesop's Fables piece? And so I thought about... Which was the tale, which fable was this one? Lion's tail was, was the kind of one on this one is about the, the lion that gets trapped in a net and a little mouse helps him or he gets a thorn in his foot or something. The mouse helps him. The mouse pulls the thorn out so the lion won't kill him. And I don't know what this has to do with anything, but that's the lion's tail. There's the lion's tail, and then there's uh, the, the thinker. The lion's tail is painted on the back. Yeah, and right. I thought about the thinker. That's a Roth figure, but I like the idea of the Rodin's thinker. Rodin's the thinker. Rodin the thinker. Mm -hmm. And, and Solana Squid, there's also Rodin the thinker. So I've done Rodin, the, and he's sitting on an apple. Mm -hmm. And then there's your fine art. You know, I got your art. Your plaid reference your, to your plaid. Mondrian and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And Magritte, too. I mean, the back is very Magritte. -like. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, Magritte. the sky, nature. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is one of your small scale sculptures, um, uh, Pterodelic Picnic. Te tetradelic Picnic, yeah, the pterodactyl picnic, but he's a psychedelic pterodactyl. I mean, it sounds like a Jefferson Airplane title almost. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, he just sort of has. And who are all the little other, little that's other his characters? Picnic. Who, who, who's the yellow? What's who's the yellow? He's from Nemo. Uh -huh. That's an actual toy. Oh, all these from, are actual the toys finding. I found. It was a toy that was made to market the movie Nemo. Right. Finding Nemo? Or Finding something? Nemo, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's an actual model I had, and I, that's a model kit from the 60s. But it's not, it's a reissue, but I, I had them for a while, and I used them in the, in the little sculpture. So all that's all his little food items, little fish, hot dogs, uh, lawn chair, and there's red pink, and there's a little, he's coming out of a planet, this little black sphere's a planet, there's little insects. And there's a flag with the, it's a little pink stuff on the top. It's a little flag with Casper the Ghost on it. He says, I'm your leader. And there, I was thinking, uh, this is a fantasy thing. And this is your latest piece. The Kuk latest piece Kukla is Saul. in the show, Kukla Saul. Kukla Saul. That was made especially for Zoe's room, correct? Especially for Zoe's room and, a, and sort of like a By little. By the way, who's Zoe? Zoe's Joe Diaz's daughter. Very nice. Um, interesting title, Kukla Saul. Tell us, Kukla who's Saul. Kukla? Who saw? Well, you know, when I was a kid, we grew up with a lot of puppets movies on television from the 60s. This was a Kukla friend and Ollie, because mm -hmm. they used to have puppet shows mm -hmm. all over the place mm -hmm. on TV. And that, that little serpent is Kukla. That's actually Kukla. What Kukla, kind of character was Kukla? I don't remember. He was just a serpent that played <laughs> in the film. It was a puppet. But Kukla means puppet in Russian. Oh, OK. okay. And Saul is Peter Saul, because that's one of my all-time favorite artists. So yeah. it's a tribute to Peter Saul, a long right. tribute to the little And Kukla. what is it about Peter Saul's work, because it's really relevant to your work, that, that why you like Peter Saul's work so much? I think because it's so wild, and the colors are so vibrant, and they're just, it's just, it's just really because they're just so wild. For those who don't know Peter Saul's work, Peter Saul was using psychedelic colors in the 1960s. His work is very political, often caricature. So a lot of those elements we find in your work as well. So he's one of your real heroes. Yeah, he's one of my heroes. Uh -huh. Okay, so Kukla Saul is kind of a tribute to Peter Saul combined with Kukla. With, with Kukla. Okay, and, and now, I used now tell us about the imagery because it's okay. complex. Okay, the imagery is uh, another Basil Wolverton character, which is the sort of diagonal pink character here with a little chrome hat. And then you have the serpent, which is Kukla. And then you have a hand that's coming out of the tree. To the left, there's a tree. It's supposed to be a hand, like a little fist. And that's holding a bucket of paint. Some people thought it was a bucket of beer. Some people thought it's a drum, whatever. And then to the left corner is, is the hand of the little Basil Wolverton character holding a flag. And this flag's a little basketball player. And then the bottom part of the body of the, of the relief is a car that turns into this mouth with teeth. And he's sort of like riding, riding the waves, riding this car that's in flames. And then way above him is, and then in that vignette of this whole piece is a robot, a giant robot on a landscape. And then on the top is a cowboy hat. And then there's another little uh, model from a kit I used to, I had, that was mine. And that's, uh, that's what it is. And then you have the little uh, swan, the little swan. It's two birds. It's like nursery imagery, nursery from a little girl's room. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. thought that was appropriate for this room. We had a little nursery, we had a little swan, something innocent. 
Mm -hmm. And Kukla is also childlike. But then you have a sort of more of the adult world, which is the car and the flames and the Basil Wolverton, the hat, and all, the robot. All that to me is the adult world. So that's Kukla. Child song, meets right? adult. Yeah, child meets adult, but kind of upbeat. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, on top, obviously, is a composite of different sections of the wall to give a sense of this um, new painting that you created as part of Zoe's room. Uh, when I look at it, I think of the Snow White with the, they're tying all the ribbons around uh -huh. her and whatnot. Uh -huh. But uh, there's a lot more going on there. Uh, for example, what's the fried egg all about? Well, that's Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty got fried? He fell off the wall. <laughs> and yeah, I don't maybe know, he's I not fried. I, maybe he's just splattered. <laughs> <laughs> well, Poor I didn't want to. I didn't want to do. I like Humpty Dumpty. I like the whole idea of him, but I didn't want to have him say, oh, "That's Humpty Dumpty." So I said, "Well, I'll just do him as an egg." So he fell down. He's just. You know what else is good? Tell us about the rest of it. There, there's. There's uh, a little bird. Is that Woody Woodpecker in there? Oh, Over yeah, that's, the yeah, that's a 40s version of the Woody version. Woodpecker, the wildness of the Woody Woodpecker, Woody Woodpecker, Woody Woodpecker. Mm -hmm. He's from the 40s. And then, he, then as he evolved in style, what? he became a little tamer. So like Peter saw, he's like the wild side. So that's the, and he's kind of sort of, but then, but I just copied the head and I just found that uh, magnet out of somewhere else and I attached him to the magnet. And he's sort of like on a tightrope. So all these little creatures on tightropes, which were originally came from Lion's Tail, which was a lion in a net that was saved by these mice, this mouse. But this rope, this net became a tightrope. And in this tightrope, you have the little bunny that's holding this uh, candle. Yeah, tell us about the candle. Well, he's, well, whatever that mouse is doing with a candle, I guess, uh, shedding light on this whole scene. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then these gremlins, uh, I guess, are another new addition to your vocabulary. Yeah, those bubbles are supposed to be coming out of this igloo. So, how, so this rope transforms into a hand, and out of this hand comes the lion's tail. So there's a reference to that little Aesop's fable. But then you have that he's holding an igloo, and out of this igloo is ice, and that made me think of bubbles because it's water. Mm -hmm. And then the bubbles made me think about scrubbing bubbles. It made me think so of So even in your own gremlins. process, there's kind of a free association that's going on. One thing leads to another in your yeah, mind. Yeah, that's do you, evolved. Do you, do you immediately go and draw something when you get an idea like that? I collect a lot of images first, and then I just start amassing them, them playing with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, this sort of idea came at the last. Uh, the gremlins came at the last because it says, well, it had, to, it had to have something in the bubbles. What, were you influenced by the, the space itself? Like, you know, for example, the shape of the architecture, like what am I going to do in this corner now? I th yeah, because it was, it was a square room, so I did all these squares. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, but the gremlins, I mean, you needed something to fill the corner is the point I made. Yeah, something yeah. To, to be a, a, a juxtaposition to, to that room. I think it was just like these bubbles of gremlins. And, I mean, you, I can't explain it really, you know. It's just, and then just like, finally, um, we have this, this great, Toy box. The toy box because Zoe's it's Zoe's room box. and, and the, the telling Zoe, put your toys back in the toy box. <laughs> Good advice. Okay. You know, so there they are. She's put all her toys back in the box. Mm -hmm. and, and these are more like all the inspiration that I have for How did you decide what toys? Was it just random? Because I had boxes, boxes. Was it random though? Or did you, I mean, I noticed. Um, uh, now I can't remember, but there's some things that look very deliberate in there. What, what, what were some of the decisions? Yeah, like the rat fink bank on the bottom, that purple thing is an actual, I deliberately put that in there because mm -hmm. that was, that, that's, if, you know, because it, it goes with all the work with the Tex Avery and the Big Daddy Ed Roth. And then I always used, and then I used the, uh, what's the name of that little character from Sesame Street? Elmo. Because Zoe collects Elmo. She likes Elmo. No, she does. So I put that as sort of like a tribute to Zoe. So Zoe is this little girl. So I put the little Elmo in there. And then the rest are just things that I really do like to collect. I like. I like all those things are the things that I like. Mm -hmm. And I and I think and and but also because it was Zoe's room, I had to pick some I selected things that were more, more little girls. Like there's a castle in there and there's uh, little monsters and there's little uh, Tigger and 
So yeah, they were deliberate. I deliberately, I didn't just pick anything. I was so real deliberate in what I put just, in there. You didn't just empty out the closet. No, 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 no. And I arranged them in there upside down. I had this huge claw. I could arrange them around it. Then they put the top on and then they turned it upside down. You know, everything's deliberate. Everything I put in there, I had, I had to like it. Ah, okay. So I it's, had to. It it's, had your, to. it's the pick hits of your collection in a way. Yeah, a lot of pick, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I guess, John, if there is something that all of this uh, communicates to us is that we're never too old to be young, right? That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, yeah. So with that, I want to thank you, and we're going to open it up for the audience. Okay. Well, thank you. So uh, if you, uh, would someone like to raise their hand if they have a question? Uh, yes, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, that sculpture is always toy box. I thought was really funny if, as a sculpture for a child's room that they might have a plastic box full of toys that they can never actually get to, but <laughs> yeah. have to spend their time, you know, growing up looking in there, imagining what it'd be like to play with those toys. Hey, I was wondering if you've ever had any contact with Tex Avery and or Big Daddy Roth. I met Big Daddy at Roth in Dallas when they had a convention of comic book convention and toy convention in Dallas. I actually met him, and yeah, I met him. That was the only person I actually met, and he's, you know, so that was nice. But he was real uh, sort of a, how do you say, a, a modest person. He had this little table. I thought he would be rich and have all this stuff. He had a little table. He had all his little models. He could buy his T-shirts. Worked out of the back of his car. but. He was there, and I met him, so that was cool. Have you ever seen your art? No, I never showed him that. I couldn't do that. It was just enough just to stand there and say. <laughs> you have another question? You have a question over here? OK. Like, is some, like is some of your art famous?